It's one of Oregon's seven wonders, right in our own backyard. What was once a spiritual place known only to natives, today has nearly 800,000 visitors annually, placing tremendous pressure on park use. It's the fastest growing state park in central and eastern Oregon. Josie Barnum grew up in Tumalo, and as a Smith Rock Park Ranger, she's seen much growth. Bend overall, Central Oregon, we have a massive increase in flux of people moving here, uh, just because of all the outdoor, uh, outdoor recreation opportunities uh, that Bend and Central Oregon has to offer. Um, so the growth in the area, I think, increases our growth. Uh, the Seven Wonders program has increased our growth and, uh, and tourism. Smith Rock has gained an international reputation through much publicity. I mean, it's an international destination climbing park, and that's really the reputation of Smith Rock, right? So uh, it's an extremely important uh, climbing venue for the climbing community in the Northwest. Uh, it was called the Animal Village by uh, the native Paiute, and it's because this is a magnet for wildlife. And so everybody from photographers to birders to just casual hikers enjoy uh, viewing the wildlife and, and the native uh, native plants and flowers and that kind of thing. Increased user pressure can take a toll on limited parking capacity, facilities, and the 12 miles of designated trails. Brown says the park is in the process of updating its master management plan. Uh, that will look at all aspects of, of park management and preservation. So. Uh, we look at, we're doing wildlife assessments, uh, visitor surveys, cultural assessments. Uh, we actually have a firm that's been hired to do a capacity study to basically look at at what point is the park full and what does that mean and, and then how do we manage it in, at those busy times in the spring and the fall when the park is full or over full. There are certain natural areas around our western U.S. where it does become overcrowded and it's yeah. on a fee or a permit basis. And when those permits are um, uh, at limit, you can't go. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you ever see that happening here? Right now, we, we, we don't. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be all, all options are on the table uh, during the master planning process as to how to best, you know, preserve this amazing natural resource, but also provide recreation, right? That's a dual mandate for Oregon State Parks. And so the, the master planning process will look at how, be, how to best do that. And, and again, all, all options are on the table mm -hmm. and will be uh, vetted with, with the public and our partners. Are we approaching capacity in your mind? I would say yes. Most of the, of the people that I work with would, would agree that there's certain times of the year, not all year, right? So there's only certain times of year, spring and fall particularly, and then uh, holiday weekends. Uh, yes, you know, the restrooms are not able to handle the volume of, of traffic. Um, the trails get quite crowded. Um, so we're seeing some trail uh, degradation and some degradation to facilities because of the large number of people. Park Ranger Josie Barnum says some activities such as weddings have been restricted to two a month. We've put a moratorium on commercial filming in the busiest parts of the year, which are the spring and the fall. Um, and generally a lot of the, the bigger companies that would come out and film they have a lot of setup, cameras, props, people um, needing to bring things in and out of the canyon and we just don't have the staff to accommodate them uh, during the busy parts of the year. While a specific date for the next public meeting on the new management plan has not been determined, it will be in mid-August at the Deschutes County Fairgrounds.